Hi guys and welcome to my what I would like to call Snapdragon 810 report because I know I talked a lot of crap about the Snapdragon 810 on social media but I also kept it a little bit to a minimum because I didn't want to say anything what I saw on media and so on without me properly trying it for myself. I finally got a Snapdragon 810 equipped device, it is the HTC M9, did all my testings and in this video I want to share my thoughts and my opinion on the 810. All I think you need to know, I will give you benchmarks, I will give you real life performance, I will talk about the heat and possible throttling and then I will talk about the battery drain as well. So the first thing I want to do is actually start with the benchmark, something I don't usually like to do, but let's just do it just because I want to show you something. If you can see here, here is the M9 and I did just to compare it with a Snapdragon 801 device, the Sony Z3. If we see the N2 benchmarks, the first run I did started off with 50,000, then it got to 48, 40, 40 and 39. As you can see, it did throttle quite hard after the third run already and then it didn't go any lower. For the Sony Z3, as you can see, 43, 42, 42, 7, 42, 41. So no real throttling going on here. It did jump again to 142. So nothing to worry about here. I then let the device cool down, did a second run. And as you can see here, 52, 46, 42. And again, we are below 40, 39, 39. It jumped then for some reason to 42. And I did another run just to see what was going on. And I saw 39 again. Again, Sony Z3, 43, 42, 42, 41, 41. So as you can see here, there is no throttling going on on the Z3, but there is quite some throttling going on in N2 to on the M9. Not that I have say that this has something to me. Quadrant, as you can see here, 28, 27, 28, 26. So not really any throttling going, maybe a little bit, but I see this as just benchmarking differences. For the Z3, 13, 20, 12. So as you can see, there is no difference. And what I want to say here as well, you saw the benchmarks and it did obviously throttle, but does this have anything to say about real life performance? And I will get to it right up front. No, I don't think so. Because in real life use, I didn't notice any throttling. Yes, games sometimes when the device got hot, maybe dropped a few little frames, but not in the extent that I would even bother back up because this could even happen on the Z3 that doesn't throttle. I say it is more of an issue within benchmarks because they put on a way more consistent load. But if this is actually noticeable in real life, and let me quickly show you what the actual 810 is capable of, because let's just try with a game because we already have one here. Let's just start a game and for you to see how well the 810 does in games. As you can see here, this runs perfectly smooth. And I already used the device for a few minutes, so no complaints here at all. It is smooth at all times, absolutely fine. And playing half an hour or longer, this didn't change. So as you can see, the gaming performance is spot on and amongst the very best I've seen so far. This is no issue. What about the app performance though? Now, let's try a browser here. As you can see here, absolutely super smooth absolutely fine let's try phoenix as again wow absolutely smooth no complaints let's check the next step here as you can see here smooth at all times let's go into it it will load once again super smooth no issues Last app to try Google Plus because that is an extensive app. And I see a little bit of stutter here and there, but Google Plus just has this habit. So no concerns here. And even if the device should already throttle, like after using it for an hour or half an hour, or even playing games and jumping straight back into apps, I didn't notice any stutter. Sort of. It was performing within the system, within the apps at the floors. And also, as you can see here, the multitasking performance is absolutely flawless the animation is actually the one thing that slows down the whole process and not the device as you can see here this would behave absolutely perfect so the multitasking is pretty much the best i've ever seen because also the interface is really nice in-game performance is totally fine and even when the device is already quite warm after more than half an hour no noticeable throttling or performance issues still playable at all times 
on a very high level, even if it maybe could drop a few frames. Same goes for apps. Apps stay perfectly fine all the time. But there is one thing that I want to talk about and that is the heat. Because it never got that hot that I would have any concerns to burn myself or anything. That is all rubbish. Don't bother about that. But what it does get, it gets warm quite fast. And just one little story. A colleague of mine saw it and said, hey, you finally got the M9. Let me quickly try it. He took it in his hand. And the first thing he said, what's wrong with it? I said, I don't know. I don't get what you mean. He said, it's so warm. And I said, it's impossible. I just used it for a minute before I gave it to you. I took it again. I felt it. It was slightly warm. And I told him, no, 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 this is not warm. This is pre pretty, pretty much the temperature it has all the time. Because we have temperatures about 30, 40 degrees Celsius here right now. So this is pretty much the worst case scenario also. But if you use this device for maybe just like five minutes, it gets to a temperature where it just gets awkwardly and uncomfortably warm in the hand, but even more so in the pocket because I can use it for half an hour, an hour, watch movies, play games, and yes, it will get warm. It, I will sweat a little bit, actually quite a lot, but I will never have any issues with, with holding it. But if you use it for maybe 10 minutes and then put it in your pocket, this is where things become a bit of an issue for me because then it just feels like I've pissed myself. It just is very, very awkward in your pants and the device needs a lot longer than usual other devices to cool down because the Z3, sure, it gets warm as well in the summer, not as warm as this though, but it cools down very early. Same as for the Galaxy S6, that one got quite warm as well, not as warm as this one, but it also cooled down earlier. So this device, maybe because of the, or I think pretty much because of the aluminum, dissipates the heat a lot, but it sometimes, for some reason, actually aluminum should dissipate it earlier, but it needs to cool down. Early. So what I mean is it gets warm, awkwardly warm, a little bit too fast and then holds up this heat for a, bit, a little bit too long. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the battery. The battery drain definitely seems to be worse than what I've seen on the 801 or 805. From what I see right now, we have a 2840 battery, which is quite good because this one has 3100. So the difference isn't too big, but I get easily six, seven hours of screen time here. And I, for right now, after just a few days of testing, barely get three, three and a half hours on this one. So you can see the 810 draws a lot more battery. But let me get it all to an end here. Whatever anyone says about the 810, performance overheating or throttling is not anything you should bother about. Nothing to concern about. Performance is always spot on. But I also have to mention, it is no upgrade to last year's high-end generation like the S801, maybe even the 800 and the 805. Those perform with Lollipop on a similar device pretty much the same. I wouldn't say better or worse, only maybe the Nexus 6 perform better, but that's a Nexus device and has always a slight performance advantage. But other than that, if you just want to upgrade because it's a new device of the performance, don't do it. If it's because of the device and you don't have an 801, 805 device and you want the best of the best in terms of performance, then you can go for it. But there are things you have to maybe bother about and that in my experience is the battery drain battery life just doesn't seem great and the heat in hand because in the hand it just gets uncomfortable way too early and holds this in the pocket way too long so once again forget all the throttling forget all the performance issues forget all the overheating but don't forget what anyone says about battery life and the heat in hand because this is actually my main concern Battery is something, if it's good enough, I don't care if the battery drain is higher, if it's good enough. What doesn't seem to be quite the thing here, but for a lot of people it does. But the heat in hand is for me actually the biggest issue. So I hope this thing cleared up a few things because I saw so many bad reputation things going around the internet. Some of them are true, some of them are not because I actually always thought the performance of this device is rubbish or the Snapdragon 810 in general and it would throttle and it would bother the performance, but no, it does not. That's not the issue. Okay, 
leave me your comments if you have anything you think about the ad 10 if you have maybe some real life experience yourself i would <coughs> like to share it with you so bye until next time